So over the past 24 hours, there's been a significant uh, amount of information obtained by investigators, and this consists of the extremely hard work by Highland Park Police, the Major Crime Task Force, State Police, ATF, and the FBI. Uh, they've, everybody has been collaborating very well to further this investigation. The community has been absolutely terrific as it comes to uh, reporting information that they have, things they may have witnessed, things they may have seen, turning over video that has really helped us uh, further the investigation and aid investigators. One point I just want to clarify is Robert Cremo III, he's 21. He'll be 22 in September of this year, and he's a resident of Highwood. So throughout the past 24 hours, investigators have spoken with numerous witnesses, some of the survivors. Uh, they've had the opportunity to review numerous video clips, uh, both from cell phone video recordings and fixed cameras in the area and they've con uh, conducted a number of other follow-up investigations. And based on where we're at at this point in the investigation, and some of this is still preliminary, so is subject to change as we keep moving forward, but we do believe Cremo pre-planned this attack for several weeks. Uh, he brought a high-powered rifle to this parade. He accessed the roof of a business via a fire escape ladder and began opening fire on the innocent Independence Day celebration goers. The rifle was purchased in Illinois, and the information we have thus far is that it appears to have been purchased legally by Cremo. Uh, during the attack, Cremo was dressed in woman's clothing, and investigators do believe he did this to conceal his facial tattoos and his identity and help him during the escape uh, with the other people who were fleeing the chaos. During the attack, we believe that Karimo fired more than 70 rounds from this rifle into the crowd of innocent people. Following the attack, Karimo exited the roof, he dropped his rifle, and he blended in with the crowd, and he escaped. Uh, he walked to his mother's home, who lived in the area, and he blended right in with everybody else as they were running around, almost as he was uh, an innocent spectator as well. He borrowed his mother's vehicle. Uh, we issued an alert yesterday afternoon Chief Jogman uh, provided the vehicle information and Cremo's information. Uh, we're very thankful that an alert member of the community saw Cremo's vehicle traveling southbound on Route 41, dialed 911, an alert North Chicago police officer spotted the vehicle, waited for additional backup units to arrive, conducted a traffic stop, and they were able to safely apprehend Cremo with no injuries to the officers. Inside the vehicle, there was a second rifle located. Uh, indications is that was purchased by Cremo as well. Thus far, over 30 people were injured during the attack, and this does not include the six who lost their lives. Right now, Cremo remains in custody at this time. Uh, there are no indications that there was anybody else involved in this attack. It, by all indications, it appears Cremo was acting by himself. The Lake County State's Attorney's Office has been with us from the ground level. They're with us this morning. They were with us through the night. Uh, we continue to review the information. Investigators are still developing leads and, and very critical information. Uh, once we're at a point where we're ready to review all of that information for charges, uh, we will sit down with the state's attorney and review for criminal charges.